What's going on, beautiful people? How's everybody doing out there tonight? Or this morning or whatever time you're watching this thing. Yeah. Hey, did y'all watch the shot last night? Tonight? Episode six. Woo woo woo. W O O or Whoa Whoa Whoa. I don't know. It should have been Whoa 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 Whoa. Because it was a sad, sad episode. If you have not watched the episode yet, make sure you uh, like, subscribe to the channel. But you may want to watch the episode before you watch this video as I do a recap. Because I got a spoiler alert. Some things happened in this episode. We were not expecting. There's some things that happened on this episode that we were expecting. And overall, good show. Very sad. Very, very sad. Very sad. Let's deal with the first and the main thing. We've got confirmation that Miss Keisha is being kept under lock and key by this weirdo right here. This joker right here is the one that has Keisha under lock and key. And let me just tell you, it was really, really sad seeing Keisha in that situation. She was locked up opening scene. She's, she had handcuffs on. She's locked up, locked by the chain to the bed in this guy's basement. And, oh, by the way, confirmation that it is the jogger. The guy was jogging in the other episodes. It is that guy. He has her locked up in his basement. And just sad, uh, it was Kevin's birthday, and she was making a uh, a card. She was writing, uh, kind of making a picture of happy birthday, bro. Then she started reminiscing as far as when he would, she would take him out for his birthday. That was big sis. And they had a good relationship. So it was really sad to see that. And then in real life, the fact that, you know what? There are actually women actually in that situ situation in real life. And having a daughter, you know, it's like, man, I started thinking about it and you can't live your life scared, but you got to be prepared. So uh, just a sad situation to see. So that 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 was the first thing, a sad situation to see. But guess what? Ronnie is on the case. Ronnie is trying to redeem himself. He is on the case. And guess what? Ronnie went to my man's house. And Ronnie, uh, you know, doing the blackout, right? Ronnie heard Keisha screaming and hollering. And he tracked it down to the house. And so he heard his spidey senses or just something going on in his mind that said, you know, this is what's going on. So, but today on this episode, he actually went to my man's house and he confronted him. And uh, this is when he was knocking on his door. He confronted him and said, Hey, can I, can I come in and use the bathroom? And the man let him use the bathroom, told him he was uh, in the neighborhood, but was homeless, didn't have a pot to piss in, you know, but when he came in, um, a man made him go upstairs and then Keisha heard somebody walking up there and she started yelling and screaming. And my man, uh, the jogging guy, this joker right here, he actually started to turn on the TV, the pot kettle. And Ronnie came down and said, did you hear that? Now, now I, it, it, it almost got pretty hairy right here because if you look at my man, I'm just going to call him the weirdo, the weirdo jogger who abducted Keisha in the background, he actually has his hand on a trophy, a statue rather. Yeah, trophy. And he was getting ready to clock Ronnie in the head, knock him out. And hell, Ronnie might have ended up locked, uh, chained up in that basement, right? But uh, but but he was able to play it off. And so Ronnie left. But, but, but Ronnie still had the, the spidey senses going. And he was like, you know what? Something's not right. Something's not right. In the preview for the next episode, you see Ronnie following up. So, so I think I think Ronnie's on the trail. You know the the police, their dog on sure ain't sure ain't looking for, and the family's starting to kind of you know it's been, it's been a few weeks now, but Ronnie's not cutting it loose. Ronnie's not letting it go, and uh, it, it really speaks to the whole missing people, missing person um, situation. If you uh, of a minority, of a person of color, uh, black, Hispanic, or low income, white, don't matter. If you don't have the resources, nobody's looking for you. What was that girl, Pamela Smart? Man, they looked for that girl for the last 50 years. I don't know if they ever found her. Uh, no, no, Bonet Ramsey. Uh, Y'all remember that? The little, little girl's a model or whatever. 
And but anyway, that's a whole nother story. Let me just get back focused. But that was pretty sad. And it was Kale's birthday, so it was pretty sad to see her reminiscing and to see her chained up. The other sad thing that happened this week was Miss Ethel. She passed away. Spoiler alert. Uh, she did die on this episode. But the cool thing about before she passed away, Ronnie actually took her out and uh, had it, gave her a chance to go to uh, her old club, come to find out she owned a blues club. She was an entrepreneur businesswoman back in the day. And when she went to the club, though, the flavor was a little different. It was no, it was no longer a jazz club. I'm sorry. Now it was a, a, a adult entertainer club. And so they had the guys dancing. Uh, but before the night was over, uh, Miss Elthor had them sitting in awe, listening to her tell her stories, her history of her involvement of owning the club and how things were back in the day and people were looking. And then, of course, it goes to the scene where you actually see Miss Ethel uh, passes away and Ronnie, Ronnie, uh, Ronnie is definitely missing her. And once again, that's, that's, that's the, the second sad thing about this show. The third that sad thing is, um, you know, Duda, oldest pair, he is running for mayor, right? And Otis Perry, his mama, <laughs> man, his mama actually played by this lady right here. His mama actually contacted the opponent and did a campaign for the opponent saying that basically her son ain't worth a quarter. <laughs> And I'm laughing, but could you imagine the hurt? You know, oldest pair, and oldest pair. He's he's not a nice guy. I get that, but could you imagine the hurt, the pain to see your own mama sell you out? So anyway, what happened was Candy um, Birds got got involved. Candy, I shouldn't call her name Candy. The act, the Candy Birds, but she's playing the role of oldest Perry's wife. And so oldest Perry said, "Don't get involved." But, you know, um, the character played by Candy, um, she got involved and ended up meeting with the mother. And this is the picture you see here. And I think she paid her like $20,000. Uh, first off, was ten grand. It was $20,000 for her to sign a, a non-disclosure form not to talk about her son. And she was saying her son wasn't nothing and, and her son came in. So that... That, I mean that that's that's sad too. The your own your own mama. I mean, and I understand that goes on. I, I've been fortunate, blessed to have a very loving, supportive mother, and uh, I could only imagine having a mama that's basically saying you ain't nothing. And you hear people say that, you know, people say hey, you ain't nothing. You're not gonna be nothing. Your daddy wasn't nothing, and um, that's just hard. So so you had those those three sad things going on. Now on the positive tip, there were some good things going on. Um, Emmett, Emmett goes out on a drug run with his girl, Tiff, you know, Tiff, she's an entrepreneur. She has a weed business. She's selling cannabis and she, he goes out on a run with her and, and, uh, she goes to a very exclusive, uh, dispensary or wellness center or a uh, place where they sell weed. And she got, she's able to get in and, and, you know, just knew Emmett was going to mess it up, you know, because Emmett, Emmett, Emmett's Emmett, Emmett's, Emmett's an entrepreneur. He's a business. Everything's a business deal. He, that's the way his mind is wired. It's business, 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 which I can definitely relate to. And so come to find out Emmett gets in there. And even though Emmett, um, Emmett's fumbling around. And so Tiff gets ready to buy some, you know, do a purchase. And Emmett's like, you know, my girl, Brings a lot of business. She she's buying a lot of stuff from you and reselling it. Can she get a discount? And the lady said, No, 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 we don't do discount. And then uh she said, he, Emmett, like, Emmett said, No, 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 let me speak to the manager. I love that. Don't stop with a no from somebody who's not able to say yes, meaning that that clerk couldn't say yes because it's not her business. So he he said, I want to speak to the manager. Got a little heated. Uh, and and come to find out the manager comes out. And guess who the manager is? The manager, yep, none other. Remember that guy? That's Brandon's 
cousin. And of course, Eminem and Brandon, they were cool. So they had a little power while he, uh, 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 Brandon's cousin who actually owns the dispensary introduced to some, some, to some weed, uh, and end up being able to strike a deal and got her a discount. So that was, that was a beautiful thing. So that was positive. Uh, they went to go to sell the weed and, uh, one of Tiff's customers, she was, a um, uh, card reader. Right. And, and so, um, she didn't have any money. Well, yeah, she was out of money. So, so they worked out a deal where, where she'll give them a free reading. Right. And you can see Emmett getting nervous, like, Oh, doggone it. And so anyway, the reading come to find out that, that basically Emmett is un what's the word? He's, 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 um, he's going to be unfaithful because of his own self and his own libido. He'll always going to be unfaithful. And so, uh, Tiff, his girlfriend, he, she heard that and they had a big little blowout, you know, and, and he had to convince her, which he's a smooth talker that, you know, Hey baby, I love you. I'm there for you. But based on his track record with all those kids that he does have, I think he has what one, three baby mama. So he's not off to a good start, but hopefully as he matures and gets older, he can um, tame that down, you know. Uh, also, Kevin's birthday, that was a positive thing. Uh, Kevin and his little girlfriend, they went roller skating. Of course, the, Kev, the girlfriend comes from the other side of the tracks. That's such a country term. The other, his girlfriend comes from a more affluent background, and they go to that school together. And they actually fell out because the girlfriend told her mom, and her mom told somebody, mama, and the girl, some of the girls from the country club came to the skating arena in the hood. And, and uh, Emmett heard him talking. I mean, not Emmett. Um, Kev heard him talking about his sister. And Kev's thinking, I don't want nobody to feel sorry for me. And so he got mad. He walked out the restaurant when him and his girlfriend was getting pancakes. But on the positive good side, he did go home. His family, his mama and his mama. Yeah. Is that right? Both of his mamas <laughs> surprised him with a birthday party. Uh, he had Jake there. He had Big Papa there. Big Papa's girlfriend. Um, I want to say, Mar what's that girl's name? Maisha? Kaisha? Moisha? I don't know. Whatever the girlfriend's name. And then um, um, his two moms just showing them love. Made a big stack of pancakes. A uh, 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 um, birthday cake out of pancakes. Of course, Big Papa dropped the cake when he was trying to hold his girlfriend's hand. It's kind of cool seeing that relationship kind of blossom. It's innocent. You know, they're sweet. They're holding hands, a little peck on the cheek. And it's good to see a good, um, a nice relationship developing between those two young people. So that was a positive part of the show. Oh, also, Jake had a chance to spend some time with his brother, um, Tig. Because Tig came to town trying to get Jake back uh, from Otis Perry, who's kind of adopted him. And so um, he was able to go to an abandoned house and get Reg's stash, about $50,000 out the wall, you know. And so they had some quality time. They were able to play basketball together. And I think Jake took a shot at him and hit him. And, um, and Tig was like, okay, you got that out. I'm not going to be a punching bag. You know, we good. You know, he hit him for, Jake hit him for walking out on him. I guess that, that was, a, that was about, but also guess what? Jake told, uh, Tig told Jake why, why, um, who actually killed Reg. And, um, of course, Otis Perry actually had Reg killed. Jake didn't know that. But his brother Tig told him that, and so uh, in the preview of next week's, in the preview you did see um, Candy, Otis Perry's wife, telling Otis Perry, once Jake finds out about you killing his brother, you're gonna wake up, you're gonna have a blade on your throat. So um, that that's that's developing, and then also the weirdo, the weirdo jogger that has Keisha locked up, he went on to explain. That uh, in his mind, check this out. In his mind, he's actually trying to save Keisha. 
Because when he was in high school, he had a girl that he liked, and she wouldn't date him. She rejected him, and she ended up sleeping around, getting pregnant, uh, just had a terrible life. So in his mind, in his sick, weird old mind, he is feeling the jogger, the jogger that snatched Keisha. I'm back on that. I forgot to mention that earlier. So anyway, I mention it now, doggone it. I probably should write notes down. But then I don't want to be there reading. But anyway, he was saying in his sick mind that because – he couldn't help, quote unquote, help this other girl. He's gonna help save Keisha from herself. And once again, uh, weirdo psycho. And but here's the deal: you got weirdos and psycho out there in the real world. And yeah, so so that 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 was that was with that situation. And did I miss anything? Let's see. Uh, Yeah, that's Otis Perry and um, his wife, Candy Bears. Does she have a name in the show? I don't know if she even has a name, but they're watching his mama. His mama selling him out for a quarter for some money. Uh, I don't know if she was even paid money to talk badly about her son, but I think that's nothing more than self-hate on the mama's part. You know, I, there's a saying that if you feel, if you spend like 15, 10 minutes with a person, 10 minutes, how they make you feel or try to make you feel what they project on you is what they feel about themselves. So if you have somebody that's always negative, always putting people down, they don't think about too much about themselves. Well, on the other hand, people love themselves, think highly of themselves when they're around you, they give that same or that same love, that same energy in the room to other people. And I, I believe that's true. I really do believe that's true. So, um, yeah, that's it y'all. Hey, episode six. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Of the shy, did you watch it? Are you gonna watch it? Did you like it? Uh, like I said, it was pretty sad, right? Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you all for watching me. Uh, please share, like, subscribe, comment whether you agree with me, disagree with me. Love yourself, be nice to others. Have a nice day, and maybe just maybe I might see you around the way. Y'all be good. Talk to y'all later. <laughs>